we are going to discuss the secret life of pawns. Uh, but today we are going to start our uh, lesson about uh, pawn structures. I think that pawn structures is probably one of the most uh, important things uh, to know in chess. There are so many pawn structures. Uh, we have, for example, double pawns, we have triple pawns, we have isolated pawns, we have pawn chains. Uh, pretty much every typical, uh, typical uh, opening that we have in the chess game is defined by, by the pawn structures. Uh, so if you think about it, because you know, I, I can probably take off all the pieces of the board and show your pawn structure, and you immediately, you, you immediately will know, you know the opening that was played. For example, uh, if I do, uh, let's say, I put the pawns like this, uh, then we know that this is the Sicilian dragon, and, and so on and so on. So pawn structures are definitely very, very important. OK, so today uh, we are going to discuss uh, some of the strengths and weaknesses that we have uh, in pawn structures. And I would like to do that by giving two, uh, a few games, a few example games. The first one, we are going to look at a game <laughs> from 1998. Uh, Lev Pologuyevsky was a very uh, strong grandmaster against uh, Yuri uh, Dakonian. So let's see what happens. So knight of three happened in the game, uh, knight of six and c4. We start with this move order, which we call the ready defense. Very flexible move order. Probably, by the way, probably this move knight of three is one of the most flexible uh, moves that we have in chess because white still does not reveal his um, his intentions or what kind of an op opening to play. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, if black plays something like c5, then white can play e4. We suddenly, we transpose to the to the Sicilian. If uh, if black plays something like uh, d5, then we might be transposing to the queen's gambit or so things like that. So ba basically, knight to f3 is one of the most flexible uh, moves that uh, we have in chess, uh, the first move. So knight, knight f6 was, was played. Uh, black is, is, is pretty much uh, copying from, from white and saying, OK, well, if you're playing flexible, I'm going to do the same thing. c4, b6, and now <laughs> g3. So white likes to fanchetto his bishop to on g2. Uh, the fanchettos nowadays um, are very, very popular uh, because we understand that on the chessboard, we have those uh, two major diagonals. This one, uh, the h1, a a8, and we also have the a1, h8. So this is why we like to fanchetto our, our bishop. Uh, also, it creates, uh, uh, it, it makes the king feel safer wh when the bishop is next to him. So bishop g2, e6, and now white played d4. Now, um, so we transpose into this uh, kind of uh, the queen's uh, Indian defense, uh, which could have started with the, with the moves d4, knight f6, uh, c4, e6, and then knight f3, and then b6. Uh, so as you can see, this is a transposition. This move d4 allows black to play this move bishop to b4 check which was played in a game. If white wanted to prevent this, uh, this move, uh, bishop before, uh, white can actually castle short. I, I used to play it like this in a few of my games. And then it basically, it restricts this, this option of black to, to play bishop before. However, uh, what black can usually play, he can play something like c5, pawn, pawn to c5 to try to prevent white from playing d4. So this is just one of the variations. So in the game, Pulogievsky played d4 immediately. Uh, bishop before check. Uh, we al we always have this debate: uh, how do we how do we uh, defend from this check? Uh, there are lots of options here. What can either play bishop d2? You can also play knight d2. Usually, the knight does not go to c3 anymore because if the knight goes to c3, we know that the bishop is going to take the knight, and the pawn is going to take the bishop. And although white gets the two bishop advantage, now white has those double pawns and. This is something that uh, we don't like to see. It's uh, inferior. The, the pawns are just uh, troubling each other. So bishop b4 was played. Bishop to d2 is the most, uh, uh, is the most straight straightforward approach. Bishop takes d2, and queen takes on d2. Uh, again, uh, some people would like to 
take here with a knight on d2. However, um, mo most fashionable is to take with a queen because the knight will uh, likely to find a, a better spot on c3. Just castle was played, knight to c3. As you can see, white finished up his development. Now, what should black do? Well, black has lots of, lots of options. He can either play d5 immediately, he can play more of a positional game, put all his pawns on, on dark squares. In this game, black used this move knight to e4. And the, the idea of knight e4 is, is pretty simple. Uh, black wants to exchange all the pieces, and uh, for example, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. And now this bishop is basically counterattacking this bishop on g2. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty difficult to move it away from here. Um, so let's say white can castle here, and now it's going to be very difficult for us to move the bishop away. Um, we will have to move the knight somehow and then exchange our <laughs> bishop. And usually people who fan shadow the bishop, we don't really like to exchange this bishop. So it creates some headache for us. So in this, uh, in this game, Pologievsky decided to play this move queen to d3. He said, okay, I'm not going to take the knight, I'm just going to move my queen, at the same time attacking the knight. Um, f5 was played in this game. Um, this, is, this is a very typical maneuver. This is kind of a pawn structure, defending the, this knight. Uh, <coughs> in an Indo Indian and Queen's Indian, we know that black usually doesn't play d5 because he does not want to uh, uh, block his bishop. So the bishop here is much, much more active in this case. Um, okay, so f5 was played, and again, we need to fight this, this knight on e4. So white played this uh, brave move, knight to e5. Um, so, so what to do here with black? I mean, black is in a kind of a crossroad. He needs to figure out, okay, well, this knight is being attacked. Uh, I'm going to lose a pawn. So, so what do I do? I mean, if the knight takes here on c3, uh, he's going to lose the bishop on, on b7. Uh, black does not, again, black does not want to play d5 because that's going to create lots of weaknesses on dark squares. So black, de black decides to uh, use tactics, and he plays this move knight to c5. And the idea is that he retreats with the knight to c5, and now he's attacking the, the queen on d3. Um, <coughs> you know, what to do? We don't have time to, to take the bishop on b7. So white had pre pretty much no choice, but he had to take the pawn on c5. Bishop takes on g2. And now white played rook to g1. Uh, one of our members in the audience uh, feels the pain for white. It looks like it's pretty horrible for white, right? White lost the castle, white lost the bishop here on g2. I um, mean, what, what's going on? How, how does black uh, get so much, uh, so much advantage in the opening? But this is not the end of the world, because uh, actually white's pieces are pretty active, are pretty active. And uh, right now, um, uh, black decided to retreat with his bishop to c6. Okay, so what to do here with white? What would be our next move? I guess the question would be, uh, do we take this pawn on b6? Do we, do we defend this pawn on c5? Do we ignore this, uh, this threat? So how to proceed here? White castle on e3? Uh, castle queenside, and so your idea is to um, just yeah, sacrifice the pawn. Do, uh, do a little bit more pressure on the b6. Yeah, perfect, very good. You're playing just a grandmaster. Uh, so castle, multitasking, we defend the king, uh, we activate a rook, and, and now black needs to make a choice, I mean, what, what to do, and then we put some, a lot of pressure on the d7 pawn, so that's exactly what happened. Black decided not to delay this, this capture on c6, and he played queen to f6. Um, the idea was probably because um, he wants to get the knight away from here on e5. But now white again ignores this threat on the pawn on c5 and plays f4. f4 was played in the game. And finally black decided, okay, well, my position is starting to be pretty bad, so at least I, can, uh, at least I will take a pawn. So he took on c5. However, uh, now white has this nice uh, and amazing uh, technique he can use. 
Well, uh, although our knight here on, the, on, on E5 looks beautiful, well, we need to come up with a plan. And the plan was, although we cannot take on here on D7, uh, now white decided to capture here on, on C6. Now, uh, if black takes here with a knight, then the D7 pawn uh, falls, and after this, then the C7 pawn, and everything becomes weak. So black decides to recapture with the pawn. Yes. That is a, a very ugly pawn structure indeed. Uh, but black is black is a pawn up, right? But we don't we don't really feel this. So what to do then? Why to move? Knight to a4. Okay, knight to a4 was suggested. And okay, that's an idea. And so what if I play knight a6? Okay, we can also go e4. Yes, please. e4. Yeah. Queen, queen d7. Queen d7. Okay, yeah, that's that's possible. Um, yeah, so the question is, do we go after those pawns or we don't go after those pawns? Yes, please. Uh, I was just going to say e4. E4. You're going to ignore those pawns. Yeah, that's the question. Do we, do we get to come here and start picking those pawns up one by one? Or do we ignore them? And Pologayevsky decided that those pawns are very, very weak. And also, uh, it, they really, really restrict this knight on, on b8. So yes, we can play something like knight to a4. Uh, however, now the knight can come to a6, which will, uh, which will black would play anyway. And yes, he can play queen d7. But wait a second, now we're going to have some trouble here. Uh, maybe something like rook b8 or, or knight b4 is going to come in. Uh, rook fd8, really it's going to basically activate uh, the opponent's pieces. So I'm not really sure exactly, but I think rook fd8, maybe take, maybe knight to b4, and we might lose the a2 pawn. Um, so suddenly we have to calculate a lot. So in this position, why decides to ign ignore those pawns and just to play e4, just get more, more space. If black takes the pawn on e4, that's, that's going to be pretty bad, right? Because the knight takes on e4, uh, I'm going to fork you, and I'm going to fork the queen and the, and the pawn here on c5, as well as creating this um, isolated pawn on, on e6. So black decides not to take on e5, and he, um, uh, he plays uh, knight to a6, and now e5 is played in the game, fixing up those, those pawns, and now <laughs> e6 is going to be forever a weakness. Queen, uh, queen e7 was played. And now it is time to start picking up those pawns. So queen f3, attacking the, uh, the pawn on, on, on c6. Uh, knight b4 here does not help, because I will just play simply a3. So I cannot defend this, this pawn. So black had to play queen to e8. OK, so white to move. What to do next? G4. OK, g4 is possible, yeah. B3. Pawn to b3, OK, that's also possible. Mm -hmm. So your plan is, is to uh, double the rooks yeah. on a d-file. OK, good. Anybody else? So let's, let's compare those, uh, those three plans. Uh, first of all, if I play this move b3, I don't really see right now the re a reason why to play this move. Uh, because the, the pawn on c4 is not getting attacked, the pawn on b2 is not getting attacked. So maybe in the future I will, I will, I will play b3, but maybe I won't. Who knows? And for example, uh, you will see in the game that uh, one of the reasons why black couldn't play knight b4 is because white restrict, restricted his knight uh, with a3. Now if I, put, if I play both this move a3 and b3, then b3 will become a weakness. So I might want to wait with this move. g3 is another very, um, uh, very lucrative option. Uh, g4, I'm sorry. Uh, g4 is, is another option. Um, 
But uh, here again, sometimes we need to, to, to look at the, at, the, at the board and say, you know, think prophylactically. What does my, what does my opponent want to do? And you will see that it really black doesn't have m much of a plan here. So by playing g4, you might check, uh, check him, uh, checkmate him on the g file, but you might also give uh, black the, the, the option to get some counterplay of his own. So in this case, opening it immediately is not, is not so good. And um, so in this case, I would always, I would always teach my students to ask themselves, what's my worst piece and how can I improve it? Uh, my, my queen is good, my, my rook is good, uh, my knight might find a way, a spot for himself to, to, to transfer to. Right now, I don't really see a good square for the knight. So white does decide to double up the rooks and he starts with this rook. So he plays rook to g2. Uh, uh, same same way, but uh, same same plan, but different way. Uh, so rook g2 was played, rook f7, and rook g2 d2, uh, and that's that's it. The black black is completely completely restricted. All of his pieces don't don't have any any spaces, no uh, no places. So the rooks cannot come to the d file. The queen has to stay here on e8 to defend the c6 pawn. Uh, the knight is not doing much. Uh, so, positionally speaking, this is almost lost. It's just uh, just to play such a position is uh, pure suffrage uh, for 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 black. You just uh, wait for the death sentence to come. Uh, so h6 was played in the in the game. Black is trying to to make some useful moves. Uh, knight a4. So now I'm improving my knight, putting some pressure here on c5 just in case. Uh, king to h7 was played. And now a3. So we so, so again just improving the little a bit by bit. Knight is going to attack here. The pawn is restricting the knight, so the knight cannot move anywhere, and so on and so on. Rook to rook to b8 was played. Okay, so what's next? So it looks like uh, uh, you know we improved our pieces, but what, where, where do we? How do we break through? Okay, interesting idea. <laughs> Queen h5 is definitely uh, a move that I would consider in the game. Now you have to ask yourself two questions. When you, when you come up with a plan, you always have to ask yourself, what, what happens if I, ha if I get another move? Right? So let's say I do put my queen on h5. Well, what, what if black does, does, doesn't do anything? It's not in Zugzwang. Let's say he plays like something like rook c8 or rook a8, just waits. In that case, uh, you might be saying that you're kind of pinning the, here. But I don't see that we can't we can't really play rook d7 because I think he can take with the queen, rook takes and uh, and then our rook is going to take. We're going to get two rooks for for a queen, uh, which in this position going to bring lots of control for black. In addition, after playing move like queen h5, you want to look at what happens if, if black moves his rook. Well, do you really want to exchange your queens in this position? No. And the answer is no. That's correct because. Uh, he has no space, we are attacking, so we want to leave the queens on the board. So, so interesting idea, but not queen h5. Yes? h3 and g4? Okay, so we go going back to the, the, the same idea. h3 and g4 uh, can be played in this game. Uh, again, if, if I do that, I'm kind of afraid that he's going to take and get some counterplay, maybe queen f8 afterwards and get some counterplay on f4. Then the, rook, the queen check on yeah, just king h8 probably. Yeah, so it might it might work if I play like h3. If I bring both rooks here on the h file, g file, then play g4. But then, well, who knows? Maybe it doesn't even take us. So uh, it's a bit a bit risky. Yes, very good. Again, what's our worst piece? So now, I mean, in this position, uh, the only piece we can improve is to try to improve the queen. But not to on the queen side, but uh, looking at his weaknesses, and he has lots of them. So white played queen to c3. Uh, queen c8 was played, and now queen to a5. So attacking the knight, looking at this pawn, looking at this pawn. Um, now really black black has uh, some 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 troubles here. Um, okay, <laughs> so again black cannot do cannot do much. Um, any rook move is, is not, not going to be so good. By the way, white has a threat here. For example, if black plays something like rook e7, 
um, white can probably play something like rook to d8. Queen takes, rook takes, but I also get this knight. So black <coughs> played um, rook to b3. And uh, what's the idea? Well, now if uh, white plays rook to d8, then black is planning to play something like queen b7. And okay, we do control the all all the all of the back rank, but then there are some some ideas that black might bring his rook to f3. He might then play a queen to to b3. Um, some some tactics going on here. So the simplest way for white was was to say, okay, well I improved all my pieces, but uh, I can't improve my pieces any anymore. So I just want to get rid of my opponents best pieces and right now he got worried about this rook so the move that he played was simply uh, rook to b d3 rook d3 was played rook takes uh, rook takes he has to exchange and queen to uh, b7 um, okay so again we i want to improve my my pieces now i'm, I'm less worried about there's no rook here but if i try to 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 bring my my rook to d8 then again, maybe black is gonna try to, to even to sacrifice uh, his um, his knight and trying to perpetual check us. So white needs to make just this nice little move, king to c2. Now we improve the king. Uh, rook e7, and now finally rook to d8. Now pay attention that in all of those moves, white could have taken on c5, but I, I don't have to. I mean, why would I take? I can I can do it anytime I want, and really, it's uh, it's uh, for black. He needs to think about well, what happens every time he needs to calculate what happens if he takes me. So, just like play, playing around. Um, so rook to d8, and now king g6 was played in the game. <laughs> Not so sure. Maybe just maybe just black was out of moves. Okay, what to do here in, with white? So we improve the overall pieces. Um, what to do next? Do we take on c5? We don't take on c5. What to do next? Okay, so you say to, to take on c5. Yeah, this this is uh, this is an interesting option. Um, now, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. You definitely you're going to attack my rook. You're going to attack the pawn here. You're going to attack the the pawn here. Uh, that's 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 a good option. But uh, again, um, uh, let's let's go and uh, let's let's look at this from Black's perspective. Just gonna flip the board for just a moment. Just think about uh, Black just played the, his last move, King G6. He has nothing to do. I mean, his knight cannot move. His queen cannot move anywhere. The rook cannot move anywhere. He's just gonna go back and forth with the king. So yes, we can take on C5. But it might um, make uh, give Black some extra options, right? So why decides not to take on c5? But how do we use now the fact that all his all his pieces? If you look at here, the queen here and the knight are on the queen side, not in the game. Suddenly, the king feels alone here on g6. Correct. So why just play queen to d2, bringing in the queen, and now uh, I want to open up the uh, the king side. So queen d2 was played, king f king f7, and now queen to d1. Uh, the threat is obviously queen to h5, and then g6. I take, and it's almost a mate. Uh, black played king g6, has to defend this pawn, and finally g4. Yay! The, the play that we were waiting for. Fireworks. Uh, F takes g4 was played, but this is almost uh, lost. And now here, even if f5, take, take, and black did play g6, but he actually resigned here because uh, probably just queen to f8. And what is so amazing about this position is just look at, look at his pieces. 
I mean, the queen and all those all those pawns really are really really restricted, and that that is a ho the whole point of the game uh, is that we don't even have to touch it, right? It's like uh, they are, they're in prison. <laughs> and every pawn break was followed by a check. Right, right. Um, so now so now we would like to to break in the in the, in the king side. So that's so that's a nice illustration how. Uh, really, triple pawns or double pawns are, uh, are a weakness. However, they are not always a weakness. So right now, I would like to show you another example where you'll see that the double pawns might be even a strength, which is quite strange. This game is uh, pretty, pretty famous, uh, played by Nigel Short versus Jan Timan in 1991. Uh, very, very strong and, and famous two grandmasters. Um, e4 was played by, by Nigel Short, uh, knight f6. <coughs> uh, so we have the other kind defense, uh, getting less and less popular nowadays uh, because it gives lots and lots of uh, space for white. e5 is the main line, uh, knight to d5. D4 was played in D6, and pretty much in this position, white needs to figure out uh, a plan. There are lots and lots of moves here. A, a white can either push C4 to get, get, gain another tempo on the, on the knight. White can you know, take on D6. I can play something like F4, knight F3, bishop C4. Lots and lots of options. Um, what I used to play here, I used to, I used to just push C4 for myself. But uh, in this game, Nigel decided to play uh, knight to f3. Also a pretty uh, a natural move, developing the piece. g6, again, we see a fair chatter in this, in this game. Uh, bishop c4 now. Knight to b6 back, and bishop to b3. Nothing much going on. Bishop g7. Uh, and in this position, after bishop g7, why decided to play queen e2? And wh why do I need to play this move queen e2? Because uh, black wants to take on e5, and again, if let's say if I castle, pawn takes, and if I take with a pawn, take, take. Well, um, the space advantage in, in this in, in this kind of an end game, if you call, if you can call it an end game, is not felt as much. Knight c6, and actually this pawn might become very vu vulnerable after bishop g4 as well. So, so why decided to keep the, the queens on the board and by playing queen to e2? So queen to e2 was played. Knight c6. Short castle, short castle. And h3, a great prophylactic move. Because if we don't play h3, the bishop is going to come to g4. For example, if we just play knight c3, we have to be careful because now bishop g4 and suddenly all of those pawns are hanging. And it's going to be very difficult for us to, to defend everything. Uh, it's pretty much like, like getting a perked, move, uh, perked uh, defense like with uh, those pawns on e4 and e d4 and then pushing it just uh, too much. So h3 had to be played. a5. A4. So we we can't uh, we cannot allow black to gain more space with A4. Some people, some players prefer to play the subtle A A3. Uh, this is kind of the difference also in the Roy Lopez. We see this or the the Italian game. Sometimes white black plays A3 or A A4. It's kind of a it's a matter of taste. So A A4 was played completely black uh, completely fixing the A5 pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and um, black decides to exchange a few pieces by playing knight to d4. Knight d4, we have to take. Queen takes on d4. Uh, the pawn here on e5 is hanging, so we have to play rook e1. So far, so, so, so good. So far, it's uh, pretty forced. And now black does this move, pawn to e6. Um, this move is a little bit strange. Um, I would say this would definitely not be my first candidate move, this move is e6. But uh, in my opinion, 
probably what happened is that black was uh, afraid of this move e6 or from white. Uh, but if it was up to me, I would probably just develop the bishop, probably the bishop to, to f5 or something like that. I don't see why to be scared of e6 too much. Uh, because if you try to play this immediately, I can probably just take everything and um, my pawn here on f2 might be hanging. Um, defending it will not help because the b2 suddenly hanging. Um, so I think this this move e6 really was one of the uh, one of the reasons why Black lost the game. Uh, so now look at look at this this bishop on c8 being punished for no reason. Um, okay, so rook c8 was uh, e6 was played, and now knight to d2. Uh, we need to choose uh, the knight can go either to d2 or or c3. A white prefers to put the knight on f3 in order to um, really defend this pawn on e5. Knight to d5 was played, knight to f3, attacking the queen. Queen to c5. Queen went to b4. And now white had a very clear strategy. White wanted to play something like queen to h4, then uh, knight to g5 either immediately, or maybe first bishop to h6 and attack the black king uh, because we usually know that when we have su such a such a pawn structure when we have the, the pawn e5 it uh, not only controls more space but it allows all of our pieces suddenly to attack on the king side okay so black to move uh, how how should Jan team uh, you know play against this this plan or at least try to play against this plan Correct, yes, queen b4. Uh, not only uh, preventing this plan with queen h4, but also I want to exchange a few pieces. It's going to make my life much, much easier. Okay, flew board. So how to, how to continue with white? Obviously, we don't, we, don't exchange, we don't want to exchange the queens, but we also want to keep attacking. So what would be a way for us to... Um, Make sure that we hold the queens on the board. Bishop to d5. d5. Interesting. So you want to take the pawn, uh, the knight. So I guess I have to take you. Then queen takes d5. That's possible. Um, but then probably maybe bishop e6. Again, black, black gets a lot of counterplay. Bishop e6, bishop f5. Then he brings the rook to d8 or e8, and suddenly all, the, all of his pieces are c4. Uh, pawn c4, you're going to lose the, the, the bishop. Yeah. And then, uh, well, you take the knight, but then I'm going to take with a the, with the queen, probably. Um, so you just put queen, queen to back, this will be probably a, a draw of her. <laughs> well, if you go. Oh, okay, so queen e2 here, uh, interesting, yeah. with the idea of bishop d2. Yeah, and hmm. I wonder if I, can, uh, if I can play knight f4 after queen e2, or if I can play something like b6, oh, bishop, bishop a6. Yeah. What about bishop takes d5? Bishop d5? Yeah. Yeah, I th uh, so bishop d5, I will take, queen takes. And again, um, yes, we are, we, we are a pawn up. But black is going to play bishop e6 or bishop f5, getting all this, I think probably bishop f5, attacking c2, the rook d8 coming with the tempo, and lots and lots of compensation black gets for this pawn. So white decided not, not to allow this bishop to come out, but there's one more move that prevents the exchange of queens. Yes? Almost 94, 94, then I, I can play c5. But you are close. Yeah. Okay. Bishop c4. Bishop c4, yes, very good. Now, the problem with bishop c4 is that now black played knight to b6. 
So it almost looks like we have to move the bishop away and exchange the queens. But no, now white makes one of the best moves in the game. Let's see who can fight. What's the move for white? Exactly, B3. Also, not only defending the bishop, but preparing bishop to A3. Oh my. So suddenly, white is much better here. And um, so black decides, okay, well, at least I will get the, the bishop. I already went with the knight back. So knight to b6, knight takes c4, and pawn takes c4. Okay, so what do we have here? So yes, we get, we, we damaged the pawn structure. We destroyed it, pretty much. Had a, we had a nice pawn chain. Now, we had we have this, uh, this those double pawns. A4 pawn is weak. Yeah, it's, it looks pretty bad. But on, on the other hand, now we can continue with our plan. The plan that we had on the king side. There is not much of a... Uh, Contemplate that black or, or pressure that black can create here on, on those pawns. So let's see what happens. So b3, knight takes, knight takes. Uh, rook e8 was played uh, to prevent bishop a3. Rook d1, improving the rook. Queen c5, queen h4. Um, yeah, so again, as you can see in this position, black's, black's pieces are very, very restricted. Uh, taking, on, taking only five here is obviously just too dangerous. You're going to weaken all of your dark squares, probably take. Uh, I wonder if I can play knight g5 as well. But take, take. Um, I could probably play something like other rook a3, rook b1 with the idea of uh, bishop b2 and... Uh, those are not good news here. I call it the cheese structure, with all those holes. <laughs> so uh, Black decides to to keep to keep uh, playing, not to take this pawn. He plays b6, uh, pretty logical uh, idea. He wants to de develop his his, bi his bishop, bishop e3, queen c6, and bishop to h6. Uh, again, if black gives up this bishop on g7, we know that uh, if we give up this, this, the, dragon, uh, the dragon head, then we will, uh, will be a cheese. So again, uh, he decides to play bishop to h8. It's a very typical, typical maneuver, by the way, for, for somebody to, uh, to save the bishop like this. Bishop h8, uh, you know, take out uh, the, the, from this pin. So luckily for black, his rook here is on e8. So bishop f8, h8 was played. And now uh, white is playing this move rook to d8. Again, just improving the, the, the rest of his pieces. Bishop b7. Obviously, he cannot take the rook because of checkmate. So rook to bishop to b7. Rook a to d1. Okay, wonderful. Now all of my pieces, as I like to say, they are all employed. Unemployment is almost zero. Well, the king is maybe <laughs> over here on g1 is unemployed, but uh, just just for now. Um, he's looking for a job. He's in between jobs. Uh, so we, call, we call it natural unemployment, if, as far as I remember. Uh, so rook, um, rook d8, rook d1, and now, uh, again, so, so black doesn't have any plan. Uh, so what can black do here? Uh, I cannot move any one of my, my rooks. I cannot move this, this bishop. Um, I wonder if, if black can, can try to, to take on, on a4. There's probably some, some kind of a, uh, some kind of, something's gonna fall off the like queen takes a4. I think, th I think that the threat is queen e7 now. Pretty powerful threat. So black decides, okay, well, I need to exchange the, this bishop, otherwise may, there's so many mate threats. So bishop g7 was played. And now rook 8 to d7. White changes, changes his mind. He says, uh, okay, well, I, want, I don't see the, the point of exchanging the rooks now. Um, rook, rook f8, take and king takes. 
rook 1 to d4. Okay, it's an elevator. Rook a to e8. Queen to f6 check. King to g8. Okay, so the game is almost lost, but we still have to, to win it somehow. So how do we do it? Um, as, uh, as one of the, it's one of the most popular themes nowadays, uh, as well as played by uh, Alpha Zero, lots of engines, uh, we play this move h4. So now uh, the, the plan is to bring in the, 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 the pawn to h6 and just checkmating here on g7. There's nothing much that black can do. Uh, the, only, the only options that black can, they, they can choose from are playing h6 or, or h5. Now the problem with the h6 is that it doesn't really stop h5. I can still play h5 and uh, my, my castle is completely ruined. So black decided to play h5. Okay, um, so definitely white, white is the one who dominates this, this position. But again, we need to, to find... Uh, uh, to find a way a way to win this uh, now unfortunately we cannot push g4 here as we did in the, in the last game because if we do the queen here is going to take on f3 we're going to lose a piece we are going to uh, exchange the queens not too good for us so this is why this game is so so famous uh, why to move and you need to find a plan how to win this you gotta be careful with knight g5 <laughs> Yeah, knight g5 is a checkmate in one move. Queen to h2? Yeah. And what's the plan? Put the king on h2. Oh, yes. And that's the correct plan. Remember, we want to employ all of our pieces. 100% employment. So, the, the plan is, even if it's not an endgame, we want to put this king here on h6. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty, almost seems like impossible. And then you checkmate here on g7. Uh, that's exactly what uh, uh, Nigel is doing. He plays king to h2. And really, there is no defense for, for black. There's nothing? It's just checkmate? Yeah. His pieces are completely restricted. I mean, he can try to take on... Maybe if he takes on a4, but then I, I assume that there is knight g5 or g4 might, might be coming. Uh, or c7 it will be hanging as well. Uh, if, you, if you hang c7, then I'm going to bring my other rook to d7 as well. So king h2, and let's see the end of the game. Rook to c8 was played, king to g3, rook to c, c to e8, and then king to f4. The march of the king. Bishop c8, finally black realizes what's going on here. He plays uh, bishop c8, but that does not help, it's just too late. So white plays king to g5. And uh, Jan Tiemann resigns here, uh, simply because, well, even if you take with the queen, just king h6, and that's it. Queen to g7, next move. So if you see this, this position, uh, if you go just a few moves backward, uh, creating those double pawns will, 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 was, not such a, was not such a bad idea. Uh, and, and the damaging our pawn structure. So sometimes it is good when it helps our plan eventually. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us for this uh, uh, pawn endgames.